There are a few critical performance indices that help builders select the right windows. Um, Builders are usually used to selecting windows based on their air leakage, their water resistance, and their structural performance. Those are certified by the various window industry associations. So if you're in a high wind area, you might want to have a different structural class of windows. Or if you're in an area that has a lot of horizontal rain, you might want a higher water resistance. In all cases, you kind of want low air leakage because you want control. On the thermal performance side, you have two primary um, thermal performance indices. The first is U-factor, and U-factor is most critical for heating calculations and heating climates. Um, a U-factor is kind of the measure of how much energy is lost through the window due to a temperature difference. So if you're trying to heat it up to 70 inside and it's zero outside, you know what that temperature difference is. The U-factor is a measure of how much heat that window loses. Almost all low E glazings deliver uh, improved or lower U-factor. Lower is better. Um, so if you've got a heating load, you want a low U-factor. The second and probably the more critical thermal performance indice for builders to compare products today is the solar heat gain coefficient. Now, the solar heat gain coefficient is is kind of a, it's just merely a ratio. It's how much of the sun's energy that hits the window actually gets through the window and becomes air conditioning load on the inside or heat on the inside of the home. If it lets all of the energy through, it has a solar heat gain coefficient of 1, 100 percent. If it blocked all of the solar energy, it would have a solar heat gain coefficient of 0. Again, there's a variety of products on the market today that deliver a range of solar heat gain coefficients. You can have low E windows, for example, that have solar heat gain coefficients of 0.6. That means that they transmit 60% of the solar gain into the space as air conditioning load. You can also have low E windows today that have a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.3, meaning that they only transmit 30% of that solar gain into the space as air con uh, that becomes air conditioning load. So to compare those two windows, those two solar heat gain coefficients, 0 0.6 versus 0 0.3, there's a two to one difference in the impact on my air conditioner. Now I should point out that both of these windows are low E and they both look the same. So this gets back to that uh, requirement to compare certified performance values and look on that NFRC rating. So U-factor and solar heat gain coefficient are the two critical thermal performance indices. Builders in the South, in particular, are just seeing some of these technologies, even though they've been around for a long time. Uh, vinyl windows have been around for a long time. Uh, low E glazings have been around for a long time. Uh, thermally broken aluminum frames have been around for a long time. So it, it's not so much that these are new technologies, it's just they may be new in your neighborhood. The real issue is are these products going to be delivering the performance to you that you want as a builder to protect your reputation and be able to uh, install easily and, and you know, deliver those consumer benefits like uh, low maintenance and energy efficiency and comfort and reduced fabric fading and all of those things that builders use you know, to help sell the, the product decisions that they make. Um, particularly in, in high air conditioning load climates. You know, builders uh, in the south are really used to aluminum single glazing. Well, I've got to tell you that with these uh, array of technologies out there now and the low cost of these technologies, I can't recommend single or double clear glazing anywhere in the country. It just doesn't make sense to not use low E glass, particularly those low E systems that that also reduce my heating load and reduce my cooling load. Um, one of the misconceptions uh, about product performance is that, well, 
you know, if I've got low E glass, I'm going to have tinted windows. Well, you know, there are low E glazings that have tints, and there are low E glazings that don't have tints. A lot of architects, for example, they use tints to help, um, for commercial buildings in particular, to help articulate a facade. They want to show a different color of glass, and the, the glazing industry has wide array of products available to them. But for the typical home, usually people will cut a hole in that wall for a reason. They want clear glass. They want to be able to see out. And those new low E products that are available today, I say new, they're really new to the south, but they've been around for a long time. Those low E products that are available today are essentially optically clear. Selecting windows involves dozens of possible attributes that a builder could wade through and try to understand all the stuff about operator type and balancers and maintenance and durability. But, but if we were to simplify it to, say, the top three to five issues, I, I would say, first of all, on the energy performance side, I'd, of course, NFRC certified U-factor and solar heat gain coefficient. For my dollars, I would say low U-factor, low solar heat gain coefficient everywhere. If you're putting in a furnace and you're putting in an air conditioner, you want a low U factor and a low solar heat gain coefficient. Um, for the far north, I might have a little different uh, recommendation, but, but for the south, that's pretty safe. Uh, I'd also look for certified air water structural performance. I think that that's critically important. One of the things builders often overlook but is very critical is to look at the product warranties. Um, warranties vary all over the map from some of them cover everything and they're fully transferable and, they, and the, if a homeowner sells the home, the warranty on the product goes with the new home buyer. Other warranties say things like lifetime coverage, but then you read the fine print and it's not really clear what lifetime really means. And then many products are sold with no warranty whatsoever. So from a risk management standpoint today, I would say that product window warranties are one of those areas that builders should really start paying a little more attention to. Um, it, it's kind of like the old joke, who are you going to call? If you have a problem, who are you going to call? So um, I, would, I would say warranties are critical. I think that today's home buyers are more interested in enjoying lifestyle issues rather than maintenance. So I also think that builders should should consider uh, the variety of very low maintenance interior and exterior finishes that a lot of these windows come with. Some of these um, clad wood windows uh, or, or combination windows that you never have to paint or you never have to scrape or you never have to stain. I mean, some of those are really pretty spectacular products. I know that I would much rather uh, uh, be playing basketball or, or fishing than scraping and painting a window. So that's one of the one of the things I think we should consider. Uh, so those energy and structural performance certification, uh, the uh, warranty considerations, and read the fine print on those warranties, uh, and uh, the low maintenance issues. I think those are all real positive attributes that the builder should consider. There are other issues like aesthetics and design considerations. Do you want that big half round or big rounded window or the fancy triangle up in the corner, you know, and, and just about everybody makes those kinds of products. They're available everywhere. But again, certified performance and those other key issues I think are critical.